Hey, it's Jay Bonnie with Board Games, and there's nothing better than coming home from work, and it's been a long, long week, trust me. And there's a game, and on top of that, it's a game from Academy Games. And on top of that, it's a Conflict of Heroes game of Academy Games. And then it's the third edition of Storms of Steel. So the shrink is on here, and I was getting tons of glare, so I'm not going to stay here too long. We're going to unzip this. Came with a nice new little flyer that kind of shows the current games that are out. That was new as well. I don't need to look at that. But this has um, a new die. I know that. A die that helps you get through your APs. Um, and the maps. We're all done in Germany. Let's go rip this shrink off and see what it looks like inside. Booyah! <laughs> all right, we're looking at the cover. I'm going to rip the shrink off in a second, but before we do that, this is the original version. So first edition, you can see we had a bigger box. Uh, it wasn't this new style that's thicker with a lot more art on it. So you had this, it's almost like a linen finished box, same art, same art from Steve uh, Pashal. Um, but everything's gone in this new mode where you've got the corners here, the title comes in, the, the artwork fills the entire box from edge to edge. And uh, and it's actually the colors pop a little more too. So nice work on that. All right. Ooh. All right, that'll solve most of our glare, although it's still got a real nice finish on it. All right, let's see. It's a heavier game. So again, you can see that tiger. Troops are running. Air power coming in from the Russians. Okay. So here's the other thing right off the bat. Are these from game trays or were they designed? So you used to have a big tray in here that kind of had everything in it. Um, uh, Uva created a lid that sucked down on it. I would pull the whole thing out. Your cards were in there. Um, but you all shared this big tray. So you were still pulling the, the counters out, searching through. What do I need? Rifles, LMG. Now you can have your troops. So, uh, Germans, Russians, or maybe it's just the cards or whatever, but here you go. Here's your tray. Dig through, find the units that you need. And... Cool, it's got a little hold on there. Maybe some dice in there. Okay, so I knew that was coming. Get that out of the way. Here's the other tray. Let's look at these dice real quick. Good, the trays hold on very nice. So there is ours at an eight-sided die, I believe so. All right, we'll take a look in a second. So, all right, get that out of the way. And again, the same kind of tray. We've got some spacers. I'm assuming these are going to help me lock in maybe the maps. That would be new if that's the case, but I've never seen these before. So we'll look into that in a little bit. And our cards here. I'm looking because that's a bit of a different, uh, I'm trying to remember what the design was. And I just played Awakening the Bear uh three days ago so weapon card storms of steel kursk 1943 that's the artwork we've all well the style we've all come uh to know if you played the system all right mission book glossy thick i mean you can see this so how many pages we got here flipping to the back uh, 39, 40 count in the back, mission map, oh, that's interesting, so I would have to do a direct comparison, but that is, we've got a different kind of layout for your missions here, um, we've got an overlay example, very cool, all right, hmm, so this is nice, big exploded page showing you where the counters go. And 
even bigger. I mean, look, that's kind of small. So this is just the briefing saying, hey, this is how it works, but that's the full page. Got to admit, when I was looking, I'm thinking that's still kind of tiny. Huh? No, it's not. We're at full page here. Now I'm going to admit to you, I'm getting old and I think I need bifocals even, and it's sad and I'm holding off. <laughs> I've been doing my dad's trick of pulling the glasses up on my forehead. All right. Um, very nice. Satchel in uh, either hex. Rounds two and five. Okay. Yep. These are all laid out extremely nicely. Setting the stage for Kursk. Biggest tank battle in history. I can't imagine. All right, so it looks like those are going to lay out. Let me see if we got any other. Nope, just tons and tons. There was, uh, I'll have to dive in and look, but there's also a reworking of these missions. Um, if memory serves, on the original one, which I have right over there, um, Uva sent out, uh, had multiple different people come up with several different missions to be played with the system instead of one coherent person just you know grinding them all out but the complaint was so it's a complaint not mine just the general one with a lot of the the uh the missions were kind of samey and uh, they started you right in the thick of battle so it was just slugging it out there wasn't a lot of how do i approach this how do i want to approach it as a unique individual and apparently that's been worked on. But, trust me, I already got a buddy that wants to come over Monday and play this. Hmm, look at that big old battle. Wow, okay, sorry. That's going to be long. Let's see, what do we got? Okay, pull it out of this little sleeve here. This is going to be the difference with the victory points. I believe, no, sorry, mission round victory. Okay, so instead of the big card that I'm used to, looks like we're going to have a card just tracking the mission rounds, the victory points on here. Okay, this is way different. Usually you had a big card that had your command points like this, your APs, your victory points, and your mission round on it. Action cost. All right, this has to do with that die, and as you, I need to fully read the rules because I haven't done it yet, but as you roll and move the same unit, there's a bigger, bigger chance that they're going to get spent. Interesting. So and that's what my, sorry for the glare, that's what one of my big dives will be. So you got four of these because this can handle um, multiple players. Generally, I think almost always, I've all, almost always played it two-player, but. Um, what do we got? Advertisement. Okay, another advertisement. Nice player card. Wow, look at that breakout. Isn't that something? Um, very nice how this is huge, and they've broken it off in these, like, pie sections. It's very nicely laid out. That's cool. Okay, single side. Hmm, a little bit different. Not single side. Okay. So maybe they're, usually these are kind of connected, but maybe folks were saying, you know what? I want them both up so I can see them and I want to be flipping back and forth. Okay. Here's our rule book. Explaining our new trays. Your hit counters when your unit gets, when you get a successful hit on somebody, you pull a counter. It tells you if they're cowering, suppressed, panicked. There's one, at least in the old game, where you're automatically, that unit was just out. They're ineffective. They're wiped out. Okay, everything again. So, one thing Uva does is you'll have, like, a designer notes in here. You'll have historical notes that'll be layered in. Tons and tons of breakouts, pictures. Um, you'll have arrows showing line of sight. See, I don't know. Here's something about stress. Okay, that I'm not familiar with. Um, this is new on the explanation, little circles. So you're dialed, ah, sorry guys on a focus. Circles where you're dialed in on certain spots. Let's see. 
So I love the rule book before already. It's easy to reference. You always have an index. Um, so you can go check, hey, what's close combat rules again? How many fire points bonus do I get? Four. But if you don't know that, you can go check. Beautiful arts in here. So again, the, uh, the rule book does not disappoint. There's some red. These red things are a little bit different. Must be key stuff, maybe? I don't know. I don't remember there being a lot of red, but it's been a while since I've read the rule book for Storms of Steel. Okay, everything again, very nice, glossy, high quality, explanation of all the cards and how they function. And we're looking at 39 pages here. Again, can't say enough about the index. So you'll roll through and be trying to remember, you know, what, how's, what's the mortar rule again, you know, for indirect fire, non-line of sight fire. Boom, you go find it, you roll it, you find out what it is. All right, I want to see these maps because this was a big holdup. They're in their own shrink here. Let me get them out. All right. It was a big holdup because the, let me set these down and I'll open them up and splay them out here in a little bit. The maps that came over from China were warping. And Uva said, nope, I'm not sending those out. And he had them redone in Germany. Um, part of what he explained, and I'm going to go off of a long ago memory and the layman's terms. He's basically saying when they put the, the artwork down, the paper down on the, on the card stock on the chipboard, um, the Germans have some kind of system where they run the glue both ways. And so as the glue dries, you've got more of a of a cross pattern and it holds it, it holds the whole board down so it doesn't work, warp. Apparently in China, a lot of the glues just put all in the same line. And then what you'll get is a little warpage to the board. And when it's on the table, it'll do, and it's not much, but, and again, these don't do it. So I'm faking it here, but I've had games where they sit on the table on a flat table and they have a little teeter totter. That is a pain in the ass for a war game. One, the geomorphic boards are going to link up. Two, you've got counters all on them. And if they're sliding around, it's just, well, I don't like it. I don't know anybody that enjoys it. I've put up with it before. Um, but you can see here, we've got perfectly flat laying boards. I'll leave these out. Um, a lot of the Chinese boards, um, they don't warp until they're kind of out in the humidity. I always thought it had to do something with maybe I was in a more moist climate. But I keep everything pretty dry. So, But uh, we're also going to have, these are like darn near photorealistic. Your crops, the trees, um, the hexes will kind of fade in and out. I'll add in, I think I'll add in some still photos. So you're not dealing with me moving around, but the buildings. So they all are one-sided, so you don't have two-sided maps or anything, um, but gorgeous. Let me rip, flip through these. Large open fields. Um, you will have some elevation changes. And let me get one that's got a bunch of hills to show you. Oh, look at this. So here's some of the overlays that'll punch out. So... And you can see hills right here, for example. So there's two things going on. One, you're going to have a ring. You can just kind of see the ring that's going to go around and show you. And you're going to have a color variation. So again, we've gone up in elevation. You've got a color vari variation. The other thing they'll do, and I'll take photos, is there is a triangles. These two triangles showing you're at a double elevation versus a single elevation. But again, the maps are just gorgeous. Let's look at these counters. All right, coming in. The smoke actually is billowing a little more. That's interesting, I think. I forgot how thick these are, and I play all the time, but they feel even thicker when they're in this, when they're on the board. I mean, when they're all together. Look at that. Punch out extremely easy. 
Let's look at another. So here's your Russians. Anti-tank rifle, your Maxim, your rifle units. So these are the spent side. So it's the exact same art, but when a unit is spent, you flip it over and you can't use normal APs. You still may be able to use cards usually or, or your caps, which are your command action points. All right, here's our Germans. Very nice. There's a Stuka. All right, and again, you'll see the same. They're spent. So we've got some more vehicles up here, uh, some uh, infantry carrying vehicles. But this is the key part when you hit a unit, when you successfully hit an enemy unit, this happens to be the infantry side. This is if you hit a vehicle, you'll be drawing out of a cup. And when you draw out of a cup, or maybe they're just laying face down on the table or something, um, you'll just blindly draw. Now, these are the infantry again, and this blue is new. They used to be more of like a dark maroon, but they were still red. Um, so the colors were close. Maybe it was harder for colorblind people, but now this is extremely easy with the blues. But you don't know when you hit. So I got a successful hit. I'm all excited. I've hit this tank. Boom. I ended up doing light damage. Oh, man. Maybe I knocked the track off or maybe I flat out blew it up. It's on fire. Same thing's going on with your foot troops. You get lucky and that unit's destroyed. It's ineffective. Doesn't mean you killed them to a man, but they're basically out of the fight. You won't see them again. Maybe they're suppressed, stunned. So a stunned unit, it's not shooting. It's not moving. Um, it, it's not doing anything. They're just, they're frozen. Uh, same deal with panic, panic. Well, panic here. Um, they're not moving. So, um, drawing the chits, uh, you don't know until that unit starts to take an action. Also, if you get a second hit, so they got one of these on them, you hit them again, boom, now they're out. Now they're destroyed. So that's how, uh, that's one of the, wow, these are so easy. They're popping out as I turn around. Um, we will get this played very soon. I'm going to read up on the rules. I got a game on the table and I got a buddy that's planning on coming over within days to get this played. All right, guys. Whoo. Conflict of Heroes, Storms of Steel, third edition, third edition. Mm -hmm.